Hi, are you ready to get close up? Hey folks, so today I'm going to be doing some iPhone assisted macro photography together with this funky little lens from Sandmark. Now I did already make a video about this lens which you can check out up here if you want to first, but what I didn't cover in that video was a kind of beginner's guide as to how you would go about getting these kind of photos using this lens together with the ProCam app that Sandmark recommend. And so that's what we're going to be doing today. So as a quick recap, to use this lens you are going to be wanting to use the phone case that comes as standard with any lens purchase from Sandmark. And this is really important, you're going to want to screw the macro lens onto the wide lens on the back of your iPhone. Now where the screwing point is placed will differ on what kind of phone you're using, but on my 13 Pro Max, this is the one that is closest to the bottom as you look at the back of the phone. Now if you choose any of the other lenses and screw it in there, this isn't going to work properly. So next up you're going to want to find and install the ProCam 8 app and then you're good to go. Before we go about taking any photos, I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of the ProCam app. So what this app does is it essentially jailbreaks your iPhone's camera and then allows it to run in what would be manual mode on something like a DSLR. So whilst most features are automatic when you use the phone's standard camera app, ProCam allows you to have all kinds of fine control over things like exposure, shutter speed and also focus. And although we are going to be majoring on macro photography today, you can use ProCam also as a video recording app too. So as we fire this up, you're going to see there's lots going on here, specifically on the right hand side of the app where we've got all these different settings and also a scrolling dial. Now if you know your way around a DSLR camera, particularly some of the manual modes or things like aperture priority, feel free to skip this part of the video because you're probably going to be able to work out most of these settings but if you've never seen these before we're going to do a quick cheats guide here and now so moving from the bottom to the top of this list we've got auto exposure so this one setting controls a bunch of things at the same time that include aperture shutter speed and ISO. Now we're gonna to come to these separately in a tick. So broadly though, this is to do with how much light gets let into the camera's sensor. So if you slide this up, you're gonna get things like light sources blown out. And if you slide it down, everything is gonna look darker and much more shadowy. So next up we have shutter speed. Now, unless you're doing things like light trails or some sort of special effects like you can see in this photo I took a few years ago, you're not gonna really want to need to worry about this for the purpose of macro photography, but just know that you can control the frame that your phone's camera uses to take the photo. So if you're doing things like, you know, long exposures, you're all set with this app. Next, we've got ISO. So if you've got auto exposure turned off, you can play with this by itself. Now, ISO is your camera's sensitivity to light. Now, in general, you're gonna want a low number here if you're in bright conditions, like being outside in bright sunlight, and you want a higher number in low light conditions, such as taking photographs at night. Next up, we have autofocus. And here, we're gonna be using this quite a bit for our macro shooting. And this is a bit like having a focus ring on your iPhone. I'll come back to this in a little bit. Next to this, we have white balance, and this can be set to automatic or manual. So it's totally fine to leave this on auto, but if you want to have a play with it, it's used to adjust the color temperature in the picture to match the light source. So for example, if you've got a white object in the picture, ideally you want it to appear white rather than orange or blue or green or any other color. So this is also where you might try and make a photo feel warm, for example, with a higher number, or maybe a little bit cooler with one of the lower numbers in the white balance settings. And then finally, we've got the setting at the top, and all this does is it locks in your exposure, focus, and white balance all at once if you've got them set just the way that you want them. So we probably don't need to worry about this for the purpose of macro shooting, but now you know where it is. And one of the nice features of this app is that it gives you plenty of help too. So while you're focusing, you'll see these red signals appear to let you know which part of the shot are being pulled into focus and when they drift back out onto the other side. So one last thing, if you've got your lens screwed in and you've got the app fired up and you can see a big shadow across the screen like this, it probably means that your app is pointing at the wrong lens. So you can change your lens selection by clicking on this button here and you want to make sure that you've got the 1x option selected and this will take your phone's wide lens. So right, we're all set, let's take some photos. So I've chosen a bit of a random assortment of objects here with some different lighting conditions to work with. And first of all, the whole beans in my coffee machine hopper. And when I started trying to dial in my focus here, I was struggling to see what I was focusing on due to the grid setting that I had on screen. So I ended up switching this right off and I found it was much easier to eyeball the focus from here and then find a focus point that I was happy with. 
And here's the finished shot, which came out in raw format. And I've done a light edit to bring out some of the highlights. I'm just kind of astonished that this kind of a photo is possible from a phone camera. Just look at the detail on those little cracks on those beans, it's insane. And next up we have this can of coat, which I'm gonna pop here on the windowsill with lots of bright daylight to help get some reflections going on the can. Now the lens comes with this little hood and helpfully this lets you measure the ideal distance for focusing. So I'm gonna leave the auto exposure on for now and just get that focus dialed in. And this was a bit of a fluke in the end. The focus that the camera was set to was pretty much spot on straight away. So I had a little play just to make sure, but I ended up coming back to the original setting to get the final shot. And if we check out that image, I decided to crop this in so we've got a little hint of the red from the logo. And I really like how you can actually see the fine lines and even the indentations on the can that it's picked out. I think this has come out really nicely. So on to the last one. Now I wanted to try doing something here with two different light sources and I was drawn to the braided cable on my MacBook. And I thought if I could get something with the cable in the foreground and maybe the light from the charger in the background somewhere, it might look kind of cool. So I ended up having to hold the cable right in front of the lens to get the focus point just right and then being able to still see the light in the background. But I thought this was kind of cool as it adds lots of perspective and a bit of a leading line that your eye can follow. And here's the final picture. Just look at the bokeh coming from the charging point on the laptop. I'm really happy with the way that turned out. And again, you can see so much detail here, right down to the individual strands of the braids in the power lead. So there we are, three different subjects, three very different effects with this lovely little macro lens. Oh, and just before we wrap up, Sam Mark have very kindly offered a discount for my viewers. So if you're thinking about buying this lens, the slider, or anything else in the online store, just type in this code in the box at checkout and you'll get a sweet, sweet 10% discount of absolutely anything in their online store. And a big thanks to the lovely team at Sam Mark for making this possible. So folks, I hope you found this one helpful. If you are posting any photos using pictures you've taken with this lens on Twitter or Instagram, do tag me in them. I'd love to see what things you come up with and how creatively you can use this funky little macro lens. And meanwhile, if you enjoyed this one, do be kind. Let me know with a like. And hey, if you want to see more like this, possibly even a cheeky subscribe. I'll see you next time.